Hi, it's Luke Bowman here. Welcome to a different kind of lesson where we're going to look at some blues licks from the amazing Josh Smith. If you've been following Josh on Instagram, you'll have seen his Blues in A challenge that's been going on for the last few weeks, where he kind of improvised a blues chorus in the key of A, and then he challenged a lot of very famous and talented guitar players to have a go at it. They've been doing this and sending videos in, as well as just general members of the public. Check out hashtag 12 bars, you'll be able to see all that on Instagram. Some great stuff on there. When I saw Josh's original post, it kind of blew me away, and I was like, wow, how do you play that? The phrasing and timing and melodies that he has going on are really good and I really wanted to learn how to play it. So I've transcribed it and I'm going to share it today in this lesson. Please do have a look on Instagram, on Josh's account, so you can see the original. I've taken a few liberties with it just to try and get it into a standard format and I've created a little backing track for it so we can kind of see harmonically what is going on. And it also hides the fact that I can't play it anywhere near as well as Josh can. As always, if you enjoy the video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. There are links below to my Facebook and Instagram pages as well. It'd be great to have you following me on there so I can keep you up to date with everything. There's also a link to a donation button. Also, as always, there is a link to the tablature PDF, so get yourself a copy of that. And I've also included the backing track so you can take a copy and play along with that at home. It's quite a simple one that I very quickly put together using Logic. Feel free to take a copy and have some fun with it. Okay, let's have a look at my attempted playback and then we'll get into the lesson. As the title suggests, we are in the key of A. It's technically not a typical 12 bar, but we are using quite a bit of A7, D7, E, with a few of the chords thrown in. Also, this is in 6-8. It's a different time signature than usual. 6-8 basically means we have 6 eighth notes in a bar, instead of 4-4, four four, which is 4 quarter notes. So 6-8, quite often used in blues, um, gives you that kind of... One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six kind of rhythm, um, which you often hear. And that's how I've transcribed it. So I'm going to take this pretty quickly. Please use the tablature and rewind where needed. But we're starting off like this. So this is an E augmented chord. So if you think of E major, this position, your C chord, up to E. What an augmented chord is doing is it's raising the fifth note. So we've got the E, third, the fifth is a B, to the E. So what we're doing is we're raising that B to a C. So we've got seventh fret on your A string, sixth fret on your D string, fifth fret on your G and B. So we're sliding in, picking out the notes, Rest that first bar. What I would say is in a lot of this song uh, you need to use a bit of hybrid picking. So using your pick for things but also using your second and third fingers for plucking some notes. Gives it a nice kind of feel to it as well. But certain parts of this are quite difficult to play purely with a pick. So we're starting off, hit the bottom open A, and then we're sliding up. So this is an A chord. A major up here. D chord to an A major. We're taking the top two notes. We're sliding into 10th fret on your B, 9th fret on your top E from a fret below. So 9, 8, up to 10, 9. And then we're playing 7th fret on your top two strings. Try and keep that A, A ringing through. Hit the A again. 5th fret on your top two strings, 7th fret on your G string, and then your A again. So, 
terms of the room here, in a lot of cases we're using these 16th note triplets, which means that you have three 16th notes in the space of one beat, in the space of one eighth note. So you're getting that da 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 that kind of feel to it. And then the next bar starts with this little slide up, so we're down to an A7 chord here. So sliding up from the 4th fret on your D, and the 5th fret on your G, up to the 5th fret of your D, 6th fret on your G, which is part of that A7 chord. So hold on that A that you've hit at the end of the previous bar, slide up, hit the A three times in that triple feel, one, two, three, slide up again, exactly the same, then seventh fret on your G, fifth fret on your B, and back to the A again. So those two bars, pretty much go like that. Then we're moving to a D7 chord. We're playing it on the D string, 7th fret, 5th fret on your G, 7th fret on your B string. And we're sliding up again, this happens quite a lot. It's quite a popular thing in blues and Josh is using it to great effect in this piece. So we're sliding up from 646 to 757. If you can give it a bit of vibrato, either with your fingers or moving the neck around and then we're doing so kind of the D chord 7th fret D G and B strings hammer on the 9th fret on your D and the 8th fret on your B back to the 7th fret you can either hit that with your pick or you can use your fingers I'm using my first, second, and third fingers. So that hammer on is very much a grace note, quite a quick hammer on, and then we're going to 10th fret on your A, and then 7th fret on your G, and then sliding up to the 7th fret on your A, and the 6th fret on your G, from the fret below. So we've kind of gone back to that A7 chord. What I would try and also notice in this is the various rests that are in there. You can hear Josh putting those in on the original as well. It just gives it a bit more snap and a bit more syncopation. To have those pauses between the notes sounds really good. Okay, so just quickly recap. Next bar, we're going to hit the open B string. So we've slid up, then back to the 7th fret, slide up again from the 6th and 5th, and then we're walking down the open B again. So it's exactly the same position, so 7, 6 on your A and G, 6, 5, 5, 4, the open B string, to the 4th and the 2nd frets. It's all kind of over the A. Quite a common blues walk down, kind of intervals of six here. And then we keep going down. One thing I would say is watch the rhythm here. That 5-4 is actually coming as, a, as the final triplet. It's not on the beat, it's just before the beat. And then we keep walking down. So 4, 2, 3, 1 on your A and G. Second fret on your A and an open G. So it's all over the A chord. It's kind of implying the A7 there. The... And then we end the bar with this little lick. The timing of this is quite hard to write it down, so have a listen how Josh is playing it. But you're sliding up from the first fret on your A string up to the fourth. C-sharp 7 chord before going to the next bar. So it's and then you're moving up one fret to start the next bar. 
to a D7. Fifth note on your A, fourth on your D, fifth on your G, and third on your B string. Again, you can get a bit of vibrato in there. Sounds good. So, and then we've got a great little lick here, very much Josh's country style coming through. You do need your fingers for this, there's a lot too much going on to try and pick this, I would have said. So try and use your fingers if you can. Let me just play it slowly. So slide up to the 12th fret on your A string, 10th fret on your B, 11th fret on your G, and then open E string, top open E string. The idea of this is to keep the notes ringing through as much as possible. Gives it that lovely kind of glassy legato kind of sound that you often hear in country licks. It's the first four notes, then hit the seventh fret on your G, try and keep that E ringing through, then tenth fret on your D string, and then you open B, and then seventh fret on your D. So those four notes. This is what I mean about using your fingers, it's a lot easier because you're jumping back up to those open strings, it's a lot easier to pick them with your third finger rather than to try and use your plectrum. So we've got... Then an open G. And then 4, 3, 2 on your D string. This is a very tricky lick, especially to play it at the speed that the Josh is playing it at. I really struggle with it. You may have noticed that my video is slightly slower than Josh's. It's because I couldn't quite get to the speed that he was playing at in time for this lesson. It's the kind of thing you're going for, and then you're going, dropping down to the first fret, and we're playing some diminished chords. So harmonically here, we're kind of moving from D7 to D7 diminished, up to the E. Starting off here, first fret on your D, second fret on your G, first fret on your B, and second fret on your top E. So the first two, I believe Josh is actually plucking them, because then you move the exact same shape up three frets. So four, five, four, five. If you haven't played diminished chords before, they are very useful indeed and sound really cool. Basically, a load of minor thirds on top of each other, so every interval is a minor third. Is the diminished scale, so it's always going up three frets. Gives that kind of diminished sound. So the chord, moving up three frets to there, moving up another three frets to seven, eight, seven, eight, but this time strumming it a bit slower. And then up another three frets. 10, 11, 10, 11. So we finished that last lick. Nicely building the tension up. And then we're going to play a little lick over the E7 chord. Like that. So 14th fret on your D, 16th fret on your D, 13th fret on your G, 14th fret on your G. 12th fret on your B, followed by 12th fret on your B and E. Like that. And then into the next bar, we're going to hammer on. Play the two notes of the 12th fret again, on the top two strings, but hammer on to the 14th fret on your B string. hammering on the sixth of that E chord. And then hit the seventeenth fret on your top E and slide down just quickly. If you want to, pluck those top two strings. Sounds really good. Gives a bit more snap. And then back to the chord of A and a little bluesy lick that you'll recognise. A minor pentatonic. So 8th fret on your top E, bend it up a little bit, that kind of quarter note bend, and then down to the 5th fret. 
on the top E. 8, 7, 5 on your G string. So you could play it. We're looking at Josh in the video, I think he's sliding it down. So he's Grace note again on that, on that 8th fret. Slide it down to 7th, 5, and then 7, 5 on your D string as well. So, so recap that. chord, 11th fret on your G, 10th fret on your B, 9th fret on your top E. There's a bit of vibrato as well. And then we're going to slide up from the 10th to the 11th. Grace note slide again. Hit the 11th again. 10, 9. So we're playing the chord. And then picking it out. Sliding up from the 12th to the 14th on your top E. Grace note slide again, so. And then down to the 12th on your top E, 14th on your B. Then reposition your hand. There's a rest there, which is quite handy. Between the notes, and you're hitting the 12th again on your top E, sliding down 13th to the 12th on your B. 10th fret on your B to the 11th fret on your G. So, and then we're hitting, and then we're hitting an F13 chord. So you've probably played an F9 like this before, on that shape. So what we're doing here is we're having two notes on the top, which gives us an F13 chord. So we're kind of going from F sharp minor, the E. So fingering for this, 8th fret on your A string, 7th fret on your D, put your 3rd finger there to get the 8th fret on your G string and then your bar in the top 2 strings at the 10th fret. It's quite an awkward one, but it is a great sounding chord. What we're doing is here is we're picking these so straight 16th notes. Letting them all ring out as much as possible, and a bit more a pentatonic scale for you at the end of the bar. So fifth fret, hammer it on if you want to the eighth fret on your B string. Fifth fret on your top E. Eighth fret, slide it up and down to the tenth fret, nice and quickly, and then give it a bit of that quarter note bend at the end. So, next bar, 5th fret on your E, 8-5 on your B, that grace note slide again, 8-7 on your G, and then this is either some very strong vibrato or you're actually kind of bending it back up to the 8th fret, so bending like half tone. Seventh fret on your G string, so and then the fifth fret on your D string, so and then a I think I did it again from the seventeenth fret, kind of like a sliding note from the top, finishing with that lick. So fifth fret on your top E, that grace note slide again from the eighth down to the seventh on your G. 5th fret on your G, 7th fret on your D, and an open A string. Let's try that bluesy lick all as one. Kind of like that. And it brings us back into the same as we did at the beginning, that A7, sliding up from the 4th and 5th on your D and G to the 5th and 6th. And again, 7th fret on your G, and then 5th fret on your B string. And so we've got the D7, we're going back to that E augmented chord. So. At this point, Josh kind of puts a bit of a run and tando in. Nice Italian word. 
slowing it down a little bit so the, the rhythm drops off a bit. So quick hammer on, 7, 8, 9 on your A string, 7th fret on your D and then 7th fret on your G and B, so it's D major again. So we've done the A7, E augmented, back to the D7, back to the A. So keep those ringing on if you can, finishing again that A7 sliding up from the 4th and 5th to the 5th and 6th on your D and G strings. And another lovely little country kind of lick, a bit like we saw earlier, but this time it's an ascending one. And it goes like this. So this one again is quite difficult to keep the open strings ringing through. I find it hard with my fat fingers, I keep hitting the strings. So starting off on your bottom E, hammer on to the 5th fret on your bottom E, 4th fret, your A, and then an open D string, and then 7th fret on your E. The way these licks are working is actually, it's a different way of playing the scale and the fact that you have those open strings ringing through, so it makes it sound really, I say glassy, I don't know if that's an official word, but it's a lovely smooth sound I really like. So after the 7th fret on the A, get the open G, and 7th fret on D, then 6th fret on your G, open B, 7th fret on your G string, 5th fret on your B string, and then open top E. Again, try and use your fingers. Bottom open A, and then as we started, sliding up to that A chord up here. So from the, from the 9th and the 8th fret, to the 10th and the 9th. Hold it a little bit, hit it again and pull it off. Okay, I hope you got something from that. Some fantastic licks in there. Hopefully with the chords and everything you can see how you can use them in a typical blues 12 bar kind of situation. Have some fun with them and as always try and come up with your own. Try and adapt them to your own style of playing, add things to them and try them in different positions etc etc. But have a lot of fun with it. Hope you enjoy it and I'll see you soon for the next lesson. Thank you.